I'm Risa Connery, I'm an avian researcher with Colorado Parks and Wildlife and we are here looking at a bald eagle nest where we're trying to trap one of the adults for the Front Range Bald Eagle Research Study. It's a research project that we started a little over a year ago. Today we have um, what appears to be a fairly successful bald eagle population in the Front Range and statewide but it definitely was not always this way. So. Most people have heard of DDT, it was an insecticide that was used a lot back around mid-century and it was banned in 1972 and an unfortunate side effect of the insecticide was that it made eggs a lot thinner and so it affected a lot of birds including bald eagles. So in the 1970s our raptor researcher with CPW, Jerry Craig, was following um, mostly golden eagles because there weren't very many bald eagles for him to, to study and monitor at that time. But statewide we had anywhere between one and four active nests in the 1970s and we didn't have any in the front range until the Bar Lake nest was established in the 2000s decade. But DDT was banned in 1972 and bald eagles were listed under the Endangered Species Act in 1973. And uh, I was just looking at his data a couple weeks ago, and he graphed the number of, of bald eagle nests statewide. And if you look at that graph, we have what looks like almost exponential growth that really took off in the 1990s. So back in the 70s, there were no eagle nests in the Front Range, and now we are monitoring over 100 every year that are, that are occupied. You know, while we've seen a pretty rapid increase in nesting eagles, and that's good. We also have seen an increase in the number of concerns, management incidents that our agency responds to because this area has been rapidly developing in terms of humans as well. So we've got a lot more housing and we've got commercial developments and we've got oil and gas wells that have gone in and wind farms and everything else that goes along with uh, an increasing human population. We've got eagle nests that are over bike trails and hiking trails and houses. And we've got others that are still pretty isolated out on a piece of farmland that probably hardly ever see people. So it kind of runs the gamut and that's part of the reason we're doing the research study here. We've got um, increasing eagles and we've got increasing human population. And um, while it seems like we've got a successful eagle population, there's also the potential for some conflict. And we want to make sure that our eagles continue to be successful and are managed properly. We wanted to be able to follow individual bald eagles to see where they're foraging, what areas they might be avoiding. We've got some nests in this area, despite it being the front range, some of them that are pretty rural. They might be out on a piece of uh, rural farmland. Um, and then we've got other nests that are right in town. So we recently trapped an eagle nesting pretty close to a big parking lot in the Denver metro area. So it kind of runs the gamut. So we're really interested in how bald eagles are using this, this habitat um, that humans are also using and figuring out how we can support our managers and how we can support continued success of our bald eagle population. So the tags we're using for, the, for this study are a relatively new technology. So instead of communicating through the satellite network, they ping off of cell towers. So that allows the tags to be smaller, so they're lighter weight and they're lower profile, and that's, that's better for the birds and safer for the birds. And they can give us really frequent locations. So they've got a solar panel on the back. And so um, because they're able to charge while the bird is flying and that solar panel is exposed to the sun, um, they can give us really frequent locations. So these tags have a flight mode and we can get down to about every four seconds. So when you look at a bird's daily track, 
I mean, it's, it's pretty tight. You can see exactly where that bird foraged, which is great for this study because we can see whether they're using certain areas or whether they're avoiding certain areas um, where there's human development or wind farms or something like that. We were hoping to get these tags on breeding adults, um, adults that are breeding in the front range. And ideally we'd like to get the tags on the adult male because the female spends more of her time really close to the nest. She, she spends more of her time incubating and brooding and sitting near the nest than the male does. So in terms of the overall territory and where the birds prefer to forage, I think we get a better picture of breeding habitat use if we get tags on the male. But we will happily tag the female as well. They've proved pretty difficult to catch. Um, we were not very successful until May 15th of this year. Okay, on the count of three, huh? Okay. Wait a minute. One, two, three. They're definitely a pretty resilient species. I mean, you can see that just from the nest numbers and how much they've increased in this area over the years that was once thought to be only peripheral in terms of nesting habitat. And now we've got a really successful population. So a lot of people come to see bald eagles in this part of the state during the winter. So during January, February, but our resident birds, our breeding birds are actually hanging around their nest year round and they're starting to lay eggs during that time. And so, um, this year we had a huge snowstorm in March and it dumped about two feet of snow on the Front Range. And given how exposed their nest sites are, I had expected that we would lose a lot more nests than we did. All those birds persisted and kept incubating through that snowstorm. So we've got two webcams in this part of Colorado. One is the Excel Energy webcam and the other one is the uh, city of Westminster, the Stanley Lake nest. And so you could watch that and see as the snow piled up around those birds, they stuck tight to the nest and they kept incubating. And I think that's, that's pretty amazing.